artifacts worth 2.5 million pounds have been handed over to the Oba of Benin, Oba Eware II, 125 years after they were looted by British troops during the invasion of Benin Kingdom. The returned artifacts comprising a cockerel, Oba, and an Oba head were repatriated from Cambridge University, Jesus College and University of Aberdeen, Scotland, respectively. They were handed over to the monarch by the Nigerian High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, Mr. Tunji Ishola, on behalf of the President. Ishola disclosed the two artifacts were preserved in their original forms while the value of the cockerel was put at two million pounds, with the overhead valued at 500,000 pounds, and that efforts were still on to make sure that many of the stolen artifacts were returned to the Benin's palace. At about 10,000 artifacts were said to have been looted from the Benin Kingdom in 1879 and held in different parts of the world, especially in Europe. While receiving the cultural items, the author said the bronzes were more than meant they were at, mere art, but were mostly of religious significance, adding that the two artifacts would be returned to where they rightly belong. And now joining us via audio call, we have Frank Irabo, Secretary. Benin Traditional Council. Good morning, Frank, and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. All right, with the recent development, how does the Padas feel about the return of these artifacts? Uh, the, the, it is not only the palace that feels uh, highly elated about it. It's uh, not only the Benin people in particular, but the whole Nigerians in general. We are very, very glad that uh, our own stolen uh, heritage, mm. uh, our own preferred and uh, pillaged uh, culture are being uh, reconstructed in a way of being returned to its original owner. So the return of the two bronzes, you know, is just the beginning of the over 10,000 mm. of Bini uh, artworks that were looted by the British in 1897. So the event of uh, two days ago was very, very unique and momentous. And it was a great victory over and over the colonial deeds in 1897. Okay, so now talking about the colonial deeds in 1897, I'm sure there are persons who are not even familiar with this particular history. Can you help us make sense of what happened at that time, the punitive expedition of Benin Kingdom? Okay, okay, briefly, uh, if we let's go straight to the fact of the matter. Yes, sir. You see, the punitive expedition, it was only tagged as punitive expedition because even before that, even before... 1897, the, the British government, the colonialists at, at that time, already have their eye in the taking over of the Benin Empire. They were already contemplating the throne, removing the king as at that time. That's King Ovurame, not Baisi. That's about Ovurame. Because at that time, the Oba of Benin was totally independent and it controls the whole empire, especially the, the, the trade routes along the coastal area. And the neighboring kingdoms around the Benin Empire, most of them have been overthrown by the British government. So they were already eyeing the, 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 the throne of the Benin Oba so that they can overthrow him and take over the whole empire. And for their own economic pursuit, which actually brought them to this part of West Africa in the first instance, so that they'll be able to have a free trade without any hindrance from the Benin army, ably led and commanded by the Benin Oba. So the, the 1897 uh, invasion was premeditated. You see, the Admiral, as at that time, about five years before 1897, have already written, wrote to the Home Office in United Kingdom that there are a lot of art, precious, valued, priceless artworks mm. in the King's Palace. 
that if they have the go ahead to invade the palace, that whatever they must have used, what the British government government must have used, the cost of financing the war, they will be able to recoup it through the sales of those Benin precious artworks in the King's Palace. Oh, that was yes, that was about five years before. Okay. So so the so the so this opportunity just came for them in eighteen ninety seven. In fact, eighteen ninety six. When okay, when okay, uh, now, <laughs> now I'm so sorry to cut it there. Now looking at this the with the history you just presented to us, I I, I want to ask the significance of this artifact to the Benin Kingdom because it seems like it, the the lots of things the significance are there to this artifact. So what are some of the significance of this to the Benin Kingdom? You see, these artworks that were returned yesterday, most of them, they are more of, more of religious value. Hmm. Yes, to the Benin people, to the Oba, because most of them were taken from the Oba Palace. They are more or less of a religious object. So if you go further, they are more or less spiritual objects. Mm. And as at that time, we don't have cameras. So it serves as pictorial. When an event takes place as at that time, you now commission, the other will now commission the bronze casters, the Igun bronze casters. Igun is a quarter in Benin that are involved in bronze casting. As of today, they are still there. So if any event is taking place, they are there, they witness it, and they cast it in bronze. So it will now sort of serve as a pictorial to, 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 for, 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 to the general public that any time you look at that object that was cast, it now reflects and reminds one of an event that took place. So that one is just pictorial. Then those objects also serve as historical links to what has transpired in the kingdom, to everything that has happened in the kingdom. Just as in the present day, where you have camera, you take shot here, you take shot here, you take shot there. So so it was in the days of old okay, sir. that the broadcasters we, we, we cast a very important event so that it will be in the memory, in the annal of history. Okay, so now talking about this, um, it's also known that this is uh, for us. It's more of diaries, a way of keeping records. It's diary keeping. And uh, these things, just like you rightly said, they are significant. And uh, we would like to know what is the significance of the overhead and the cockerel? What message does it have? What does it depict? What is it saying since these things are actually uh, diaries? No, no, no. See, see, so uh, I will not actually agree with you totally. Not okay. that I will not agree, but not in totality. That they actually die. You see, like those objects that were returned two days ago, the cockerel upper and uh, the upper bust. In fact, for correction, it's not upper head. It's, it's a bust of a Benin king. So when you say a bust, that means it is the upper part of the body. Uh, a bust. Okay. But you know, uh, uh, so it, it, it was, uh, it, it is a bust of a Benin king. So those two items, especially that bust of a Benin king, in most of the shrines in the palace, you will see that bust in, 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 in the altar, in the ancestral altar. Then together with elephant tusk and, uh, and, and, and the staff of, of the ancestors, which we call Ukure. So the upper bust, we call it Unwilao. Unwilao. So, so, it, it, so the, the, the significance of that upper bust is more or less very spiritual. Mm. It's spiritual. It's not even for Dari now. So that's why His Royal Majesty, the great upper of the great Benin Kingdom, Ewari II, just made a brief reference to it by saying that they were more or less of religious object so okay. they are religious more religious but they also we also know that they are also highly spiritual but we don't want to emphasize that too much all right, all right. and at the same time they are also pictorial historical ahead uh -huh. so they can also serve as tourist 
artworks okay, uh, for exactly. people to see. All right, I was coming to that. Now, talking about tourist artworks, um, you mentioned the fact that they are historical, they are pictorial, and I, I'm glad you mentioned this. In terms of revenue generation to the Great Benin Kingdom, it's supposed to be a, a tourist attraction. And we're looking at the fact that this is two out of 10,000. So what is the palace? Or what, are, what measures are the palace taking? Is the palace taking to make sure that the others are returned just so it could be for the sake of, of course, you had already mentioned that it's, it could be for tourist, tourist attraction, attraction. And, and also revenue generation. So what measures is the palace taking to make that work? Okay, so the, 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 the two that were just returned, if you compare the two to the 10,000, that are still out there in Europe and America and other parts of uh, the continent, you will see that they are totally, totally, in, in, totally, totally insignificant, two to ten thousand. You see it. So the effort the palace is making is that all these artifacts will be returned because we are in a modern society, modern day government. There, are, there, there is already a dialogue in place. All these objects outside Nigeria, by the federal law, they will come through the federal government. That has already been established. Hence, these two objects were able to come to the palace two days ago. Okay, so so the 10,000 that are still out there, okay. they will be returned as time goes on. All right, still on this, uh, we know that these artifacts in faraway Europe, where they are, they are seen as premium art objects. Now, what, uh, what, are, what about um, here in Benin Kingdom, I mean in Benin Kingdom where you are, what plans are we making to ensure that these things are also, probably we showcase them or we have a museum where we put them so that it can generate the same income they were generating over there. Is that part of the plans of uh, the kingdom? Yeah, quite correct. You see, you must have heard of the word, the phrase, Bini Ruya Museum. Mm. So, so the Bini Ruya Museum has been the pipeline for over 20 years. Has been the pipeline for over 20 years. So all these artifacts that are coming, they will be housed in the Bini Ruya Museum. Now, the Bini Ruya Museum, for, for, for clarification's sake, Okay. It's not going to be a restricted museum at all. Because we are hearing that some people are insinuating that it will be inside the palace, mm. you won't have access to it. Uh -uh. At all, at all. His Royal Majesty, the Oba Bini, has made it clear in several fora that the Bini Royal Museum will be accessible to the general public, all to right. tourists, to researchers, to historians, to everybody, both in abroad and in Nigeria. Oh. So it's not going to be a museum that have access denied or access restricted. No, it's going to be just like a normal museum, but it will be very close to the palace, probably in front of the palace there, where everybody can have access 24 hours in a day, several days in a week. Thank you very much. So that plan is already in place. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time on the show this morning. Thank you. You are welcome. Anytime. All thank right. you. All right, that was Frank in Rabot Secretary Benin Traditional Council. We'll go on a short time up now. When we return, we would be speaking with Godwin Ebraho, former chairman NUJ Edo State Council. We'll be right back.